So what are three things that I feel are very important that you know how to do if you own or even just drive a vehicle? Making sure that you do these three things will help prevent unnecessary vehicle repairs and spending unnecessary money on down the road. And I believe it's a good idea for anybody who drives a car to know how to do at least these three basic things. So let's get to it and start going over them. Okay, so the first thing we're going to go over is checking your engine coolant. When you check your engine coolant, you're going to want to make sure that your car has been sitting and has cooled off and that you do not have pressure on the coolant system. So you're going to have two main different styles. You're going to have the style with the radiator cap here. And then you're going to have the style with, you know, say a, a coolant reservoir somewhere else that does not have an actual radiator cap. Radi radiator cap style, you're going to want to remove your radiator cap. Then you're going to want to look down in your radiator and ensure that it is full. If it's not, you're going to top it off. Depending on how much it takes, you may want to start possibly looking for leaks. We've got another video that will help you find a leak if you think you do have a leak. The next thing you're going to want to check on the coolant is your overflow tank. You're going to want to make sure it's between the full and low mark. Very important to make sure that you do have the correct amount of coolant in your system because if you don't, it can cause your car to run hot and do major engine damage. On your kind with just the coolant reservoir and not the radiator cap, it'll be basically the same way. You'll have a coolant reservoir and it'll have a full or a low mark on it and you want to make sure it's in the correct area. Now, anything we go over today, you always want to make sure that you check in your owner's manual and follow your manufacturer's recommended guidelines. Certain manufacturers will recommend different types of fluids or gear oils and everything else. So you want to make sure that you do follow the manufacturer's guidelines. The next thing you want to look at is your power steering fluid right here. It's going to be the same way. You're going to have a, a full or low mark. And you want to make sure that it's in the proper area. Now on your power steering fluid, majority of the time, it should be either clear or red. If you've got a power steering fluid that is a murky or brown color, you're going to want to have it flushed and change it out to prevent from damaging your power steering pump. Same thing goes here. If you run your vehicle low on power steering fluid, you can burn your power steering pump up, and then you have to pay for that part or pay somebody to put that part on. So by maintaining and making sure that you have the proper fluids, you can prevent from doing unnecessary damage. Now when you go over to your engine oil, we're normally going to have a yellow pull tab or stick on it and it's going to be the same way you're going to have a, a low and a full mark usually about halfway in between them is good anything halfway or above you're doing all right and as long as you're not below the low mark you're fine but i'm more comfortable with it being at least halfway in between them to check your engine oil you're going to make sure that your car is on a level surface and that your engine is shut off you pull your dipstick out, you wipe the end of it off and make sure you don't have any residue on there. Then you'll stick it back in, pull it back out, and look at it. And as you can see right there, we are about halfway, so that's going to be good. Now, another one, and possibly maybe the worst checked on fluid on a system, it's going to be on your transmission fluid. It'll usually have a red tab on it. It may or may not. Just depend on your vehicle. And then you're also going to have a cold lower full mark and you'll have a hot lower full mark. So if you just started your vehicle and it hasn't reached operating temperature, you'll be going off the lower marks. If it's been running and is up to temperature, you'll be going off the higher marks. Now to check your transmission fluid, you're going to want your vehicle on a level surface and you're going to want it, the engine to be running in either park or neutral. Depending on your vehicle manufacturer, the color of your transmission fluid will be different. For the most part, on most of your older vehicles, it'll be red, uh, be a bright red. Some of them, if you got like a CVT transmission, it'll be clear or a different color. If you've got one and the fluid is a brownish sluggish color, more than likely the fluid is shot. You won't have that looked into. So that's just another thing to keep in mind. 
along with your engine and your your engine oil and your transmission fluid some of your newer vehicles don't even have dipsticks anymore some of them you have to look on the display center inside the car to find out the level um a lot of them i know like range rover for example they're like this and you can order an engine oil dipstick i think it's referred to as a uh, technician's tool so if you're particular about that and you'd like to have a dipstick majority of the time you can order one some of your transmissions you have to check it from underneath you have to have the car at a certain temperature and you'll have the tool you'll put on there to check it and we'll try to go over that in another video this is just pretty much going to cover the basics another fluid that is most time overlooked is going to be your brake fluid if you're going to have a, a minimum and a max on it you want to make sure it's in between them and you're also going to make sure that your brake fluid is clear. If it's a brownish color or it's a dark color, you need to flush it. Most of the time you recommend to change your, uh, your brake fluid once every two years. Now you also need to make sure you're careful on your brake fluid. The majority of the time it will tell you what type of brake fluid to use. So this one, for example, says use only dot three fluid. Mixing different types of fluids can, can cause you all types of trouble. So you should want to make sure you use whatever your manufacturer recommends. That's pretty much going to cover it on our fluids, on the most important ones anyways. Like I said, your owner's manual will have all this information in there if you have any kind of questions or concerns with it. I urge you, you know, hey, read your owner's manual. It'll tell you everything you need to know about your vehicle, especially checking these fluids. If you have any questions about them, drop a comment down below and I'll try to answer them as quick as I can. All right, another item I feel is very important that you always keep a check on is going to be your tire pressure. Overinflated or underinflated tires can cause uneven tire wear, and underinflated tires can actually cause the tire to blow up going on the road. So you definitely don't want that to happen. Now, in most vehicles, if you open your door and you look in your door jam right here, you will actually have a sticker that will tell you the manufacturer's recommended amount of tire pressure. So on this one, for example, We've got front 29 PSI, rear 29 PSI. It also gives us the size of our stock tires, 205, 65, 15. So you want to pay attention to that. Now, if you've got aftermarket tires or wheels and they're not the same size or the same style tires that come on your vehicle, you're going to refer to your tire manufacturer's guidelines. So now we'll move on to checking the tire pressure itself. All right, so to check your tire pressure, all you're going to need is a tire pressure gauge. These are pretty cheap to get. I would recommend that you buy a decent one, not one of the 97 cent gauges, because a lot of times they're not going to be accurate and they won't give you a good reading or they'll stick a lot. So to check your tire pressure, you'll remove your valve stem cap. You'll take your tire gauge and you'll firmly press it against it. Just like that right there. As you can see, we're right below 30. So we'll do it again just to verify that we did get an accurate reading. There we go. Once again, we're right below 30. So that's how you check your tire pressure. That's a good idea to, to always check this. A lot of your newer cars, they do have the tire pressure monitoring systems on them and it'll show that on your dash. Another thing to keep in mind too though, whenever it shows that a tire is low, Always make sure you check that tire's pressure because say it shows the front left tire is low. If somebody has rotated those tires and they have not reset the tire monitors, then that front left tire may actually be the right rear tire and you may be putting air in the wrong tire. So it's always a good idea to just double check your tire pressure and make sure you get it right. That pretty much sums up how to check your tire pressure and the proper ways to do it. So we'll move on to the next thing. All right, so last but not least, how to change a spare tire. If you drive a vehicle, it's not if but when you'll have a flat. Eventually, some, at some point in your life, you will have a flat tire, and you'll need to know how to change it. So the majority of the times, your spare tire is going to be in your trunk. If, you're, if you have an SUV or a full-size pickup or a pickup truck, a lot of times it's going to be hanging underneath. You can find your spare tire tools either in your trunk with your spare tire or sometimes in like a lot of your trucks they'll be underneath either the back seat or the passenger seat. Once again, referring to your owner's manual will tell you where your tools are 
and how to properly set them up. So you can see right here, we'll go ahead and lift our carpet up. And there's gonna be our spare tire, our jack, and our rod. Now originally, the jack and the rod are supposed to go over here to the right, but over the years, parts have been robbed or lost out of this car. So we'll get this stuff out, we'll go back up front, and we'll go over the proper way to set the jack and change your spare tire out. All right, so now that you've found your spare tire, your jack, and all your tools, and you've gotten them out, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do, if you haven't already, is get your owner's manual. So you can look through your owner's manual, and it'll tell you, one, where all your spare tire supplies and parts are. And I'll also tell you where to properly place your jack for jacking the vehicle up. So if you look right here, it's showing two indentions on your rail underneath your car. That's where you're going to want to place your jack. It's got one there. It's also got one at the rear. It'll also show you putting your rod in and how to turn your rod to jack your vehicle up. So once you have that figured out, you're going to make sure your vehicle's on level ground and you've got something sturdy for your jack to be on, whether it be concrete, asphalt. You know, you, you really don't want to do this in the grass or the mud because it can sink and cause the car to fall. So you really want to make sure you have something sturdy if you can to put the jack on. I know we're not always in the perfect situation when these things happen, but even if you happen to have a little scrap piece of plywood laying in the back of your car, it would be better than just sitting on the grass. So now we'll take a look underneath the car at where we're supposed to set the jack up. All right, so now that we're looking under the car, you can see indention there, and indention there on our pinch weld lip. So according to our owner's manual, that's where your jack's gonna go. So you wanna slide your jack there and just twist it to get it in the proper spot. Now you wanna make sure your jack, jack has got a cutout right here, and that's what your rail, your lip right there is gonna go down into. So we'll take and get it lifted up where it needs to be. It's a lot more difficult than you'd think when you're holding the phone with one hand, but. All right, so now we've got our jack in the proper place and we're ready to jack our vehicle up. You're gonna make sure that you've got your e-brake on if you've got a way to scotch your wheels, you're going to want to go ahead and scotch your wheels as well. All right, now with our vehicle jack set up, our wheel scotch and our e-brake on, we're going to want to go ahead and break our lug nuts loose. I didn't have the proper tire iron for this car in this vehicle, so I'm just going to use a breaker bar. So that's one thing you may want to do is go out there and double check and make sure that you do have all the necessary tools and on this vehicle the e-brake apparently does not work that well so that'll be something I'll be looking into as well so you'll get all your get all your lug nuts broke loose and once you have that done you'll come back over here and verify that you got your jack set in the proper place and you'll take this little bar the loop in just like that, and you just spin it. And you'll keep doing this until your tire's off the ground. Now another thing to remember, or keep in mind, is if you've got a flat tire, when you have this off the ground for that flat tire, whenever you try to put your spare on that is aired up, it might not fit, so you might need to lift it a little bit higher. But once you have it up, you simply just take all your lugs back off. Once you have your lugs off, you want to set them aside so you don't lose them. And sometimes these tires can be tricky, they can be hard to get off, but a lot of times if you just give it a good pop, it'll come loose. So you'll take your tire, 
Roll it over here out of the way. Take your spare tire, set it back up there. And you put all your lugs back on and tighten them down. Now, another thing you want to check when you do this is going to be the pressure in your spare tire. And it'll tell you on the tire, you know, like this one, I think it says 60 PSI max. And it'll also tell you so many miles per hour max. So you want to make sure that you pay attention to that. Do not overdo it. These spare tires are temporary tires. They're only meant to get you out of a bind. So you don't want to ride around on the spare tire for weeks at a time. That's pretty much going to be it. So you'd go through, you tighten all your lugs back up in the crisscross pattern. So you get them all halfway snug, tighten this one, jump down to this one, jump up to this one, jump down to this one, and jump back up to that one. Once you have that done, you'd come back over here, same way as you did it before, but in reverse, you'd let your jack back down, put all your stuff up, and go somewhere and get your tire replaced. That'll pretty much conclude my three steps or tips for today. If uh, you found this useful, leave me a comment down below and let me know. Um, I'd appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button if you did find it useful and you think you can learn some more from my content or you know you think it's a, a bonus for you to be able to see. If I didn't do something you liked or if I didn't cover something you wish I would have, leave a comment down below. You know, I'm always trying to get better, trying to do better. You know, I'm doing this for y'all to hopefully help save y'all some money and teach y'all how to properly do your own repairs. So, you know, constructive criticism is a is a great thing for me. So hopefully this helps y'all out. If it did, like I said, I'd appreciate, you know, if you hit that thumbs up, leave me a comment, subscribe. Hope y'all have a good day.